Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to welcome our first tribute from a sportsman of international renown. Ladies and gentlemen, a great goalkeeper and captain of the old Wilsonian 7th 11, would you please welcome Bob the Cat Bevan, a member of the most excellent order of the British Empire. Uh, thank you very much. Ronnie, Anne, uh, Chief Barker, ladies, gentlemen, brother athletes. Uh, it's great to be with you tonight, particularly as I nearly didn't make it. I haven't been well. All right, thank you. And I went to the doctors. I hope you're never ill and start laughing at eh? it. I went to the doctors, I said, I'm having a lot of trouble sounding my F's, my T's and my H's. And he said, well, you can't say fairer than that then. <laughs> he said, I think you've either got dyslexia or arthritis. He said, I want you to go home and get a dictionary and look up dyslexia, and if you can find it, you've got arthritis. <laughs> Anyway, he sent me to a cardiologist and he told me I had to have a pacemaker. So now I've got this little Kenyan who runs alongside me. <laughs> this is night off tonight. Anyway, I'm here, as I'm sure all of you are, because Ron is my hero. We actually first met, I reminded him in a letter this week, which I, I didn't know I was going to be asked to say a few words, but we actually met in 1974. I had a proper job then, and uh, I was uh, working for a car-free company. I used to organise all the ship launchings. We always had a big do at the end of the launching, and we always had a big name cab right? In 1974, I booked Ron uh, at a do in Denmark. It wasn't an easy do. Uh, all the timing went awry, everyone had had a very long day, everyone was absolutely pissed. And uh, he went on very late, I have to say, uh, at the risk of creeping round him. Uh, I still think it's the best stand-up I have ever seen. He took the place apart. And... <laughs> years later, Sort of bizarrely, he asked, he asked me to appear for him at something at the Fairfield Hall. So the wheel went, went full circle. And I, I got to know him over the years, and we've, uh, we've watched Crystal Palace together. Probably one of the funniest things either of us have ever seen, I should think, Crystal Palace. And, OK, I'll wait while you just understand that one. OK. Also, over the years, a sort of running joke has grown up between us. I can't quite remember where it started, but I must have mentioned to him at some point that the previous day when we were together at something, I'd done a lunch and a dinner in the same day. And he went into one about how wealthy I must be and all this. And it drove me mad, really, to be honest. And, um, and uh, this has gone on. This has become a running joke. So if ever we correspond or we meet or whatever, this is always mentioned. One night we were at a party together and we were talking to Peter Ellis, the famous golf commentator. And uh, Ron went into one as usual about Bevan doing several jobs a day and two jobs a day and how much money he had. And Peter Ellis stood and listened to all this. And then Ron moved away, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to Peter Ellis, for Christ's sake, don't tell him, but Last week, I did two lunches and a dinner in one day. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ron heard this and came storming back and went into one, could I lend him some money and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> Eventually, I sort of shut him up and I said, look, I said, um, I probably didn't earn as much in those three gigs as you would earn in one. And he looked at me. And he said, could you take the word probably out of that sentence? 
So <laughs> I've always thought, apart from being a great comic, he's a really nice bloke, but obviously he does have a bit of an edge. <laughs> Quite, quite right, Anne. Thank you very much. I was thinking of writing a really long poem about him, but then I thought that wouldn't be appropriate. And so I've written quite a short poem. <laughs> I'm pushing me luck now, I know that, that's all right. And it, and it goes thus. There's a Scottish city called Edinburgh where flag day takings are often quite bad. And a couple whose surname was Corbett, lived there with young Ronnie, their lad. A bright young kid was our Ron, a bright-eyed and neat little bloke. And if you put him in a big chair, he could tell you a rambling joke. No one got that, okay, carry on. <laughs> he grew up to bring laughter to millions. Yet he still kept his vigour and vim. For in the world of comedy, there is no bigger man than him. Oh. You certainly can. When I've, when I've finished, and you know. <laughs> He should have left her in the car, Ron, I tell you. <laughs> That's put me off now. We're about to see clips of his genius. Then we'll hear from others before his response. But I must say, he doesn't look 80. Although I expect he must have done once. Got the wrong glasses here. So, Ron, more power to your elbow as for the next decade you get set. But keep well away from organic foods. You need all the preservatives you can get. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>